Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everyone. This is the second part of the database lecture. And the first part we talked about why databases are important, uh, what are their functions, what are their characteristics, how it can help the uh, uh, any biological uh, scientist in their research. Uh, and uh, so first of all, uh, what actually is in a biological database? That is, we store any biological information that associated with specific knowledge and that's we store it in a database and uh, for example if there is a dna database and we say that we want to store the information of dna sequences then uh, we store that in some structure in any database so that uh, that may help the biologists to to access that information any 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 time they want and that is fundamental to uh, for the survival of science why because whatever uh, the biologists find they sh that should have be stored in some in some uh, user friendly way in any database so that if they want to access that information again in future there should be a uh, place or there should be a backup support that that is stored in a biological database that's what we talked about previously that it helps to find a unique window on the past uh, that that helped uh, that also provide backup support they that also helps to solve the biological questions which have been developed previously uh, which have been asked previously and now they with the help of the new information and the previous information that is stored in the in the database that then they compare it and they've come up with a new answer and the amount of significance it has the database is that you can see that each year nucleic acid research journal one of the best journals in in uh, in uh, in the field of biology that dedicates an entire issue on the available databases that whatever new database is uh, developed by any scientists they um, uh, appreciate them to submit their worthy studies in this journal and the, the, the journal has an impact factor of more than 10 which is very significant if you guys know about the impact factors of a journal so there are two types of databases in biology uh, one is the uh, you can say that uh, one type is the nucleotide and protein sequence databases and that are primary databases so one so one type of database you can say is a primary which means that the first hand information for example if i sequence a gene and i want to put that information to the first information in any, any database that would be a primary database where the primary information is stored and why that primary source in, uh, database is important because from that primary information we can come up with new uh, new form of information that can be gathered from the primary source and that is summarized in a uh, secondary database for example we have a simple uh, if we just get an example for example we, there's a protein sequence and we just know that this is a protein sequence and uh, uh, what sort of information is inside that protein sequence for example where are the specific sites where there can be any domain protein domain we'll talk about these domain and motifs and binding sites in uh, later on but from that sequence if we want to make a database of protein structure function or the uh, domains or motifs that is sort of a secondary database so now you can say see the difference that primary is the primary source information and from that primary information we come up with the new information that is the secondary information so there are a lot of uh, primary databases and there are a lot of secondary databases and um, you can say that archival database means that a lot of information that is directly stored are in primary databases and from that uh, first source the information that is curated and that is that come up with some knowledge that is called the secondary database just like i give an example that in primary database we have a protein sequence and from that protein sequence we find a motif and that now that motif is some knowledge so that is in the secondary database and uh, the source of that data as i told you direct submission of experimentally derived data from researchers so this is a uh, primary database and then results of analysis literature research and interpretation often of the data in primary databases uh, is the is stored in the secondary databases so there are a lot of uh, examples also here um, ex uh, mentioned here for example uh, nucleotide archive gene bank ddbj that is the these are the uh, you can say nucleotide sequence databases which are primary i'll talk about that in the next slide and then there are um, array express is another sort 
of uh, where we stored the new expression or any uh, new generated data of any mutation or expression that is stored here in array express geo uh, repository of ncbi or then there is one protein data bank that is the structure database the first structure which is identified is stored in the protein so these all are primary informations and from these primary informations uh, then there is a uh, second information is generated just like I showed you here that Interpro that is a database of protein families, motifs and domains that is actually uh, identified from any protein or DNA sequence then that, that is stored in the second database. Uniprot is uh, another uh, knowledge based browser of protein uh, information of all the sequence functional information of proteins and we will discuss that later on as well and then ensemble is another browser which can contain the information of the variations function regulations and more layered information of whole genome analysis and we will talk about this later for example ensemble has information of human genome mouse genome and all the information in the mouse genome or human genome which we taught uh, and explained you uh, in the in the introduction lectures are stored in ensemble so you can see that a lot of information of the genome that was found actually is the secondary source of information. So let's see, there are two, uh, three databases I mentioned. The previous one was the gene bank that is of uh, that is part of NCBI, and gene bank database contains publicly available records of sequences for almost 260,000 formally described species. You can uh, and that is published in Nucleic Acid Research. This article I mentioned the previous slide. You uh, and that was published in 2013 and now that is 200 and 2020 and now in seven years you can expect that how much big information is now available in gene bank right so uh, this contains all the information of the available sequences of dna and there are two other dna databases one was the dna data bank of japan ddbj and european molecular biology laboratory that is amble this uh, amble is part of ebi uh, platform uh, website so they so you can see that GenBank is from United States NCBI and DNA Data Bank of Japan is from Asia and then European Molecular, uh, Molecular Biology Laboratory is from Ambul. So all these uh, databases have similar uh, objective but they are located in different geographical locations and this collect information exchange information and stored uh, in one uniform format so they can that can be accessed easily. So these are three uh, main uh, DNA databases. Then there are protein databases. The first one is SwissProt and uh, the second one is Tremble. Uh, this is TR stands for Tremble and TR stands for uh, translated EMBL is uh, European Molecular Biology Laboratory. So translated means the DNA sequence is directly translated into protein sequence and one is PIR that is the protein information resource. So this uh, SwissProt is uh, I'll explain you first in the next slide that here you can see the protein sequence database of that is Swiss broad and the collection of annotated protein sequences that all the information that is uh, present on uh, in the in the protein sequence database Swiss broad is annotated and that is operated by the from as from the uh, name Swiss you can infer that uh, that is operated by Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics one of the very uh, prominent institutes and uh, the information is manually curated by specialists and verified from literature. This is uh, interesting. I will explain what does actually this mean in the next slide. There are two types of curation of information. One is uh, uh, automatically curation, automatic curation and one is manual curation. What is the difference between this is that the automatic curation actually means that the information is uh, is automatically curated using some computational pipeline and uh, in manual curation actually the information that is automatically curated is then further verified by the specialists of that particular field and verified in the literature uh, that whether this information is correct so that there is a two layered validation which means that this is a high quality database gold standard for protein orientation so it's uh, it's more suitable to use the information that is manually curated. But the problem is, what are the diff uh, challenges uh, we have for the uh, automatic or manual annotation is that 
in the uh, in automatic curation or uh, or annotation the information is uh, that is stored is quick and uh, uh, we just have to put the information in some uh, repository and that uh, repository actually has a pipeline and it annotates that this is the dna sequence it has intron exon and that belong to that species and based on the available data that is in the in the database it compared that with the pipeline and come up with the answer that this gene belongs to this species and this family so that is but uh, but uh, as you know that uh, that is automatic so if there is any problem in the sequence that cannot be dealt for example if there is uh, can cannot be dealt easily for example if there is any inconsistency in the sequence then uh, means that the uh, the sequence is not uh, the gene is not sequenced properly uh, or the there is a uh, there is something wrong with the sequencing when uh, we or anybody any researcher perform that analysis and come up with the sequence there is any problem it has nothing to do with automatic uh, curation it just take the sequence put it in the pipeline and predict the uh, what uh, dna sequence this is but in manual curation it is flexible for example it can deal with inconsistencies so it uh, one by one the specialist has to check whether there is any problem potential problem whether any uh, sequence is broken or there is any other problem so manual creation will deal with those in, uh, consistencies inconsistencies which were you know ignored by the automatic creation and used for unfinished sequence or shotgun assembly uh, we talked about these things in the in the introduction introduction so if there is any unfinished sequence we just want to make that information meaningful we can just store in that database and that pipeline will of the curation pipeline will just predict that this sequence belong to this family and that it will store the information but and and it is consistent for example whatever you uh, put that information in the database it will annotate that and put it in the in uh, in that particular species but uh, for uh, manual curation it it is slow it is very slow compared to the uh, amount of information that is uh, avail uh, uh, available to be uh, annotated or validated because each sequence if you say that there are hundreds and thousands of species uh, sequences and then there are protein sequences there are dna sequences there are a lot of other information and on daily basis there are a lot of new sequences which are generated but if we have to um, uh, annotate that information manually that it is very challenging and this is very very slow compared to automatic annotation this is one limitation but if we need to have a gold standard information we must go for the sequences which are also manually annotated so that's why it deals with the inconsistencies it also consults the publications as well as databases that manually each 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 sequence and also uh, if we want to say that this gene is manually annotated it has specific uh, structure specific function and it belongs to a specific uh, species with confidence we only go for the they only go for the finished sequences they forget about if the sequence is not uh, is unfinished or or uh, and if there is any problem in the sequence they will not man manually annotate it and that that information will be removed from the manually annotated repository just like swiss prot but uh, tremble is or uh, swiss prot is manually annotated and now you can see that why the swiss prot is a gold standard compared to tremble which is translate automatically translated information of the dna from an amble uh, to make uh, more clear and uh, simple what actually these uh, databases does that uh, do that uh, all the information from any lab submission or individual experiment is first stored in amble bank that is a european molecular biology bank but that is a dna database or in ddbj that is dna data bank of japan or in gene bank that is part of ncbi and then that is stored into swiss prod that is manually annotated or uh, and, and the tremble that is automatically annotated and and protein information resource so these are the dna information that is converted into protein sequence but each database have some different features and all this information as i explained that in the in the previous uh, table all this information from the different sources of proteins are stored in uniprot we will talk about uniprot later on and uh, to to summarize things more 
that uniprot, uh, swissprot information, as we can see here that uh, uniprot contains all the information of swissprot and tremble and PIR. So uniprot slash swissprot means that a manually curated database and therefore of highest accuracy. But uniprot tremble is the automatically annotated translation of ML coding sequences, right? So this is the difference between so this would be uh, standard and highest accuracy this would be fast and a lot of information which is not actually manually created and available in swissprot can be found in tremble and lastly this is uh, these are the amble gene bank and dna uh, ddbj are the dna databases and the primary nucleotide sequence repositories next in the next uh, part of this database lecture we will talk about structural and functional databases and we will go to them briefly uh, one by one so that you can have a precise idea about the importance and how you can ac uh, access the information in these databases for that we will also do uh, lab tasks uh, in near future thank you very much assalamu alaikum